This is a job board app that I've built with Bubble. It's available for purchase on the Bubble Marketplace. And one request that I have got from users recently is to include some analytics. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just show how you can add in some custom analytics to your Bubble app. And I just want to show how the database is set up with this job board app to understand how we're going to do that. If we look at our database and we look at data types and then look at job, which is a data type I've created, you see there's a whole range of data here, but there are three in particular I want to focus on. The first one is link clicks, the second one is views, and the third one is created data. Created data is the most simple because it's a built-in field. Views is a number and then link clicks is also a number. But we basically want to show this data to the administrator of our job board and to do that, I'm first going to show exactly how those stats are calculated. If we go on to the job page, this is a dynamic page. So every time a user is brought to this page, it's going to load up different variables depending on what content has been sent. As you can see there, I have the type of content set as job. But if I'm going to click on one of these job posts, I'm going to be brought to the job page. And you can see there the various text is being loaded in that corresponds to that job. And if we look at a workflow that's running in the background when this page is loaded, we're going to see how the views number is calculated. So you can see here on the workflow tab that when the page is loaded, we're making a change to the job. And the change we're making is we're increasing the job's views by one. Link clicks are calculated in a pretty similar way. The way the job board works is when you click on the apply button for a certain job, you're brought to the careers page of that relevant company and that's where the applicant actually makes their application as you can see here we're being brought to that specific careers page and the way i've set up the analytics is it basically tracks the link clicks so when the apply button is clicked for a specific job we're making change to that job and we're just adding one number to the link clicks parameter every single time and then we're going to that external website which again has been saved down when the initial person was posting the job. So just to give an example of this, if we look at our database and take a look at some of the jobs, I just want to highlight this job, which is an Indeed job for a digital marketing manager. You can see at the moment it has six views and four link clicks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our job board app. And we're just going to click on that particular job just so we can show how the numbers are going to change. So again, going back to our home page where that job is going to be displayed. If we scroll down, we will find it near the top. And you can see here, Digital Marketing Manager for Indeed. When we click on that job, we'll be brought to the job page. That's going to load up. And in the background now, that workflow that adds one to the views is going to be running. So let's go back to our database and let's refresh the data. And when we click on that Indeed job this time, we should see that the views have increased by one from six to seven. So let's just go into that data item now. And you can see, sure enough, the views there have improved by one from six to seven. So let's just do the same thing with the link clicks parameter. So again, I'm going to click on that apply button. It's going to send me to the Indeed career site. But just before that, there was a workflow action that increased the amount of link clicks associated with this job by one. So again, let's refresh our data. And we should see now when we go back into that particular job that the link clicks have increased by one. So let's go in. And sure enough, you can see link clicks now standard five. They were four previously. So now we're actually going to start building a dashboard for an admin that's going to display all of this data. So let's go back to the development version of our bubble app. And then we're going to go and create a new page. And we're going to call that new page admin dashboard. I'm going to convert this to the responsive engine in the background. And I'm just going to make some modifications to the width of the UI here. I like building in 1280 typically. Now, first, let's call this page admin dashboard in the page title. Let's set it to a column and then let's change the width to 1280. And we'll set the min height as 1280 as well. 
Then let's drop a group in. So we're going to do a bit of layering of groups here just to make this responsive. We're going to call this group master container. This is going to house all the content on the page. We're going to make it a column, get rid of those fixed widths and put a min width in of 300 there. Put in a min height as well, just gives a bit of room to play with. Remove the style and what I like to do when I'm building out groups and particularly layers of groups, I like to put in a color with a bit of a low opacity. So you can see you're putting in 10% here just so we can see what's going on with other groups when they're layered on top. And our second group is going to be the sub container. We're going to put repeating groups in this particular group. So we're going to give this again a similar ish color. In fact, we're just going to copy the color from the previous group and put that in there. Again, we're going to give an opacity of 10. And we can still see the different layers when we do that, which is nice. Again, it's fixed by default. We're going to change that to column and we're going to get rid of the min, or sorry, we're going to get rid of the fixed width. We'll put in some min height as well, just gives a bit of room to play with. And we're going to put in a max width as well of 1280. We just don't want this table or admin dashboard to be spreading out over the entire page. So I like putting in a max width for those. Next, we have a repeating group. We're going to set it as column and importantly for the type of content, it's going to be job. We're going to do a search for job no other restrictions so just pulling in data for all jobs we're not going to have any minimum amount of rows we're just going to use 100 percent for the height of each row and uh, we're also going to do some more formatting around the style of the repeating group getting rid of the fixed width once again put in a min width of zero for now and a min height as well okay so now we have our repeating group in here uh, i'm just going to give this a, a flat color as well I'm going to make this color of the actual end um, state. So I'm going to give that kind of gray color, set the opacity down quite low again. So now that we have our repeating group in there, what we're going to do is we're going to drop in two groups. The first group is going to be for the titles. When I say titles, I essentially mean the column headers of the da dashboard we're putting together, or the table, I should say, we're putting together. This is going to be a row container because we're going to have several different labels next to each other horizontally. Again, we can get rid of the fixed width parameter there. So now that we have that there, we're going to start dropping in some column titles. First one is going to be position. And we're going to remove the style and do some styling of this piece of text. I'm going to change the font to match what is elsewhere in the app. Also going to bold it. And we're going to change it to black, so six zeros there for that font color. We're going to get rid of the fixed width and also of the min height. And I'm actually going to put in all capitals just because it is a kind of column header, kind of useful to make it stand out. Okay, so now we're going to paste this four more times for our five different column labels. Uh, what I actually should have done already is put a margin. Uh, we'll come back to that in a sec. For the groove that these are in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a space between container alignment just to make sure they're all spread out. You won't notice the difference now, but you may later on. We'll get rid of that min height. And then, as I said, what I probably should have done earlier was put a bit of a margin on each side so they're not going to be on top of each other at smaller screen widths. So I'm going to put 10 on the left and 10 on the right. And instead of applying these individually, I think I'm just going to exist or delete the existing column headers and then paste again four times. So I'll copy that. Paste it, paste it, and two more times. So we know we're five column headers. Second one is company. Third one is going to be views. Fourth one is going to be link clicks. And then finally, we're also going to have date created in there as well. So I'm just going to preview this and show how it works. It's going to look a bit funky. And when this loads up, what we're going to see is there's going to be multiple rows of these column headers which obviously isn't what we want. So this is a little trick that I learned from the build camp uh, crew. What we want to do is, because this is in a repeating group structure, we actually only want it to appear once. So what we're gonna do is by default, we're gonna say that this element is not visible on page load, and we're gonna collapse it when it's hidden so it doesn't take up any space. And then conditional, what we're going to do is we're gonna set a condition that when the current cells index is one, we are going to put in this element is visible and tick that. What this means is the first row is going to be the only one that shows because again, that's the only one where the cells index is one. Now what's nice about that is we can now select that group 
and all we have to do is copy and paste it and we can just put in our data then and we have all the kind of formatting in terms of lining the column headers up with the data sorted so just kind of easy thing to do remove that condition for the second group obviously and also make it visible on page load but we're going to call this crew data and we're just going to change the text that's in each of these cells so instead of position we're going to have the current cells uh, title uh, before I do that what I just want to do is put in the type of content in the group itself so we can access it and of course I can't see the text now because I deleted it so I'll go back in and find that and then put in current cells title or sorry parent groups job title even Title should be there down near the bottom ish. There, perfect. I'm going to unbold that just to differentiate between the column headers and between the data itself. Very similar story here parent group jobs company's name. We'll unbold that. And for views, we'll do parent groups job views. Unbold that. Do the same for link clicks. And finally, do the same for the creation date. I'm going to do a bit of formatting on this just to show it in the format that I prefer myself. But you can also choose whichever one you want. Okay, let's take a look and see how this is on our preview screen. So loading up here and what we should see is the data is coming in there. We have our job positions with the company behind it. We have views, link clicks and date posted. Okay, so this is good. There's a couple of things we can definitely do to make this look a bit better. So let's do that now. First thing, we're going to put a bit of a margin on the bottom of the title group just to give some breathing room between the headers themselves and then also the data underneath. Going to do something similar for the group with all the data in it we're going to put a padding on the bottom just to ensure that it's not on top of each other so let's go down and put padding in there i think 15 should be enough now once we load this up hopefully it'll look a bit better and yeah i think that's a bit easier to read i know it's still here with the various colors in the background but definitely making progress so let's deal with those colors next. We can just remove the kind of placeholder wireframe colors that we put in. So let's go to the group sub container and remove that color. And you see we're left with that gray color, which we do want. That's going to be the main color of our admin dashboard. Next, I'm going to put some padding in. So I'll get rid of min height first of all. We'll put padding on the top of maybe 40 and then also 40. On the bottom the left and the right just to keep things nice and even let's take a look and see how this is now after those changes okay getting better uh, but what we don't want is the gray on just a certain section of the page what I was actually going for was on the page itself so let's deal with that first thing we're going to do is remove that kind of gray color that I put in from that specific group So we just remove that and we'll also copy the color so we can put it on the page itself. So let's put that in there. You can see it's very dark, we have it 100% opacity. So let's put that down to a much lower number. Okay, this is starting to look a bit better. Uh, I don't like the way though when the views or the link clicks are zero, that it's just blank. I'd rather it actually had zero in it. So let's deal with that next. So we're going to views, what we're going to do is put in a conditional statement. So we're going to conditional. What we're going to say is when parent groups jobs views is empty, we're going to put in alternative text and that text is simply going to read zero. We're going to do something very similar for link clicks. So we're going to say parent groups jobs link clicks when that is zero or when it's empty, I should say. We are going to put in zero as the text. Let's refresh our preview page. And yeah, I think that looks better for sure. 
getting a nice overview of the views and link clicks data. So next what I want to do is put in a floating group on top because at the moment there's no way for the admin to actually navigate off this page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a floating group at the top just so they can click on that and be brought back to the actual main app itself if they so wish. So what we'll do is a bit of formatting here, get rid of the min width, get rid of the min height, you can change that to a fixed height, and we'll put that in there. And we're going to give this a white background just to make it stand out relative to the rest of the page. And then what we can do is just put an image in there. And I think we're going to use the logo that I'm currently using for this app. And we're going to use that um, in terms of what the user needs to click on to navigate back to the index page. So I'm just going to copy the image URL from a header I previously made. Then I'm going to go back to my admin dashboard. And we're going to put in an image here. We're going to make it fixed height and fixed width of 50 pixels. And we'll paste in that image URL. And sure enough, we have our image there. Let's just do some formatting to align it in the center. And we'll also put some margins on the left just so it's not completely hugging the side of the page. Next thing we're going to need to do is put a margin on the top of the group with all our content in it. That's group master container because at the moment it's going to be swallowed up by the floating group banner itself. Okay, let's refresh our page and see how that's looking. And if we go up to the top of the page, yeah, I think that's a bit more friendly in terms of UI uh, to look at than it was previously. So happy enough with that. This isn't going to be the world's most aesthetically pleasing dashboard, but it's going to get the job done for our purposes here. I just want to put in a workflow to navigate the user back to the index page when they click on the image though. And like I said previously, I didn't really have any way of doing that. There also seems to be a rogue workflow there that isn't doing anything. So I'm just going to delete that and tidy it up. Let's just test out that navigation action to be sure it's working. So if we click on the image, you can see that the user is brought back to the main index page, which is exactly what we want. Let's go back to our dashboard. And there's one other thing we need to check for this dashboard, and that's its responsiveness. Now, typically, dashboards are viewed on desktop, so a fairly wide screen. But we do also want to make it somewhat responsive and it to be usable on mobile devices. So I'm just using the Chrome developer tools here to check out how it looks at the smaller screen sizes. And the honest answer is not great at the moment. Uh, you can see there the text is becoming kind of um, unruly and it's on top of each other. And we need to figure out a way to make this a bit more responsive. So what we're going to do, and again, I learned this from the guys at BuildCamp. Would really recommend checking them out for all design tips. What we can do is within our repeating group, we obviously put those two subgroups in, the group title and the group data. What we're going to do is we're going to set a min width on them of 960. So putting in 960 there for the min width on the title group. And let's do the same for the data group. And what this is going to do is instead of the text um, you know, becoming unformatted or kind of on two separate lines, it's just going to give the user the ability to scroll to the right of the table. So we're going to see here now when this loads that you can see the text is nicely formatted, but not all of the data is on screen. But what you can do now is, and I just want to go back and do it one more time because it was a bit zoomed in there. But if we let this load up, what we'll see is when we go down to the smaller screen widths, so let's go back into our Chrome developer tabs, developer tools even. You can see here that not all the data is on the screen, but if we scroll to the right, then we do get to see everything. I think this is a much better way of dealing with dashboards on smaller screen sizes. And again, we're just setting the min width for those two groups that allowed us to do this. I'm noticing as well that that link clicks data type is in bold, which we don't want, so I'll fix that in a minute. But yeah, I think that's a much better solution for dealing with mobile. Let's go back to our bubble editor now. And as I mentioned, I just noticed that the link clicks value is in bold, so let's undo that. 
And one more thing we need to do is we only want the admin of this app to be able to access the dashboard. There's obviously some sensitive info there in terms of the data. So what I'm going to do is if you look at the way the app is set up at the moment, there is a footer that allows people to navigate to various places on the app using the links in the footer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the footer to allow people to navigate to the dashboard, but I'm only going to make it visible to the actual administrator. So let's go back to our editor and click on the footer. And you can see here I have a number of links in already, so I'm just going to copy one and paste it in again. And instead of saying all jobs, I'm just going to change that to admin dashboard. And we're going to navigate via that link to the administrator dashboard. But then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to only make this visible under certain conditions. It's not going to be visible by default on page load. And I'm going to collapse it when it is hidden. And just to kind of give an overview of how this is going to work, if you look at our database, you'll see here I have a user saved down in the test database. And there's a field there called admin. So it's a simple yes or no field. Basically what I've done is in data types, I've created that yes, no admin field. And I only want people with yes for that field to be able to access the dashboard. So I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to put in a condition on that particular link that says when the current user's admin is yes, the link is visible and we're going to tick that. So only people where it has yes next to their admin, yes, no field are going to be able to view this link. So this is run as that test user that I created. And what we're going to see is if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, we should see that admin dashboard link appearing. And sure enough, if we click on that, we're brought to the dashboard itself. So again, the administrator has the right credentials. Therefore, they are allowed to view this dashboard page. What I want to show next is if we go back into our database and just change that admin field from a yes to a no and save it down and then go back to our main index page. If again, we scroll down to the bottom, down to the footer, this time it should not be visible again, because this user now does not have the right credentials. And you can see sure enough, the admin dashboard link is not there. Now, if there still is a risk that maybe someone's going to stumble across the admin dashboard link, even if they're not an admin themselves. So I'm also going to put in one more safeguard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in admin dashboard here. So even though this user doesn't have the right credentials to access the dashboard, they may still just be able to stumble onto it by putting in the correct URL. So what we're going to do is if the user does not have the right credentials, I'm going to put in a condition that's going to navigate them away from the dashboard as soon as they hit the page itself. And the way I'm going to do that is go into the admin dashboard page. And if we click on the workflow tab, we're just going to create a new workflow action that when the page is loaded, and we're going to put a conditional on that. So when the page is loaded and the current user's admin is no, then we're going to just navigate this user away from the dashboard page back to the index page. So let's reload this page. And what should happen is instead of the page loading fully, we should be directed back to the index page because again, this user does not have the right credentials. And you can see sure enough, they're not able to linger on the page. Instead, they're redirected back to the home page. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope it's been useful. And if you have any questions on it, please do let me know in the comments.